Chapter 14, First Pay, Then Kill. Who Kun stood next to the upper railing of the ascendant immortal tea house, he felt very satisfied with everything. This was a high class, elegant place, the decorations were beautiful, and the furnishings were exquisite, and every chair and table was made using excellent hardwood, the bowls and the cups were made from the famous Qingdezhen porcelain of Jiangnan. The clients who came here to drink tea and wine were, generally speaking, lofty and lordly people. Although the entrance fee here was at least twice as high as that of any other place, he knew that the customers here wouldn't care, because that is the nature of extravagance. Normally, he always liked to stand here, he'd watched as these noble, lordly people walk about beneath him, always making him feel as though he were above all of them. Although he wasn't even five feet tall, this gave him the feeling that he was a head taller than everybody else. Thus, he liked this sort of feeling. He also liked lofty, lordly matters, just like how he loved power. The only thing which irritated him slightly was that fearless dushiki. When this person drank alcohol, he was fearless, when he was gambling, he was fearless, and when he was fighting, he was even more fearless, as though he really had nine lives. Even if he does have nine lives, I definitely cannot allow him to live past the start of next month. Unfortunately, he wasn't really certain that he would be victorious. Whenever he thought of this, he would always feel a bit irritated. Fortunately, just at this moment, the person he was waiting for arrived. The person he was waiting for was named to King. He had spent over 30,000 tails of silver to invite this man to come from the capital to kill Dushiki. The name to King was not a very famous, well-recognized name in the martial world. This was because the things he did precluded him from becoming too famous. He didn't want prestige, he wanted wealth. He specialized as an assassin for hire, the minimum price he accepted for any mission was at least 30,000 tails of silver. This is an ancient, mysterious profession, a person in this profession being ostentatious or making a name for himself was a person who was breaking some cardinal rules. But within their own circle, Tu King was definitely a famous man, and the price he commanded was higher than that of others because he never failed to assassinate his target. Tu King was seven feet tall, dark-skinned and gaunt, with a bright pair of eyes that were as keen as a hawk's. Although the clothes he wore were form-fitting and were made from the best of materials, they weren't colorful at all. He had a cold, quiet attitude, in his hands, he carried a dark, gray bundle that was long and narrow. His hands were dry and steady. All of this was very much in keeping with his status, making others feel that no matter how high a price he charged, he was be worth it. Hu Kun appeared to be extremely satisfied as well. Tu King found a seat in a corner and sat down, he didn't even raise his head up to take a single look. His movements needed to be clandestine and secretive, he definitely could not allow others to notice any hint of a relationship between himself and Hu Kun, even less could he allow others to find out what he was here for. Hu Kun let out a breath. Just as he was about to return to the secret room behind him to drink two cups of celebratory wine, he suddenly saw a pale-faced man walk in, his walking posture was extremely bizarre and unusual, and he tightly gripped a saber in his hand. A pitch black saber, the saber was still sheathed, but he himself seemed like a naked blade, ruthless and sharp. His eyes were like the edges of a saber as well, he glanced around the room, then his gaze fixed onto two king, two king lowered his head drinking his tea. There was a cold sneer playing across the lips of this stranger, he found a seat nearby and sat down. Suddenly, with a cracking sound, an excellent wooden chair cracked underneath his weight. He wrinkled his forehead as he supported himself with one hand on the table, again, with a sudden cracking sound, that wooden table, worth at least twenty silver tails, was shattered into many fragments. By now, anyone could tell that he came here to cause trouble. Hu Kun's pupils were contracting. Can it be that this person had also been invited here from outside, except by Du Shiki to deal with him? His bodyguards and hired thugs were just about to charge out, but with a gesture, Hu Kun stopped them. He could already tell that this stranger definitely could not be handled by the likes of them. Since Tu King had arrived, why not use this opportunity to display his skills? Hu Kun was a businessman, a very intelligent businessman. Whenever he spent even a single ingot of silver, he'd expect to earn itself back. In addition, perhaps this stranger hadn't come here for him, perhaps he had come here for two king. 
This stranger was, of course, Fu Hongju. Tu King was still drinking tea, his head lowered. Fu Hongju suddenly walked to him, he coldly said, stand up. Tu King didn't move, he didn't speak either, but a majority of the other customers had already quietly slipped away by now. Fu Hongju repeatedly himself, stand up. Tu King finally lifted up his head, he seemed to have just noticed this man, it's more comfortable to sit than to stand, why should I stand up? Fu Hongju said, because I like your chair. Tu King looked at him, he slowly put down his tea, slowly stretched out his hand, picking up the bundle on the table. The bundle was, without a doubt, filled with his weapons. Hu Kun's hands tightened, his heart rate suddenly sped up. He liked to watch people kill other people. He also liked to watch people bleed. Over the past five years, there hadn't been many things that could excite him. Not even women did the trick. Killing people was the very last thing which could stimulate him, but he was disappointed. Two King rose to his feet. He picked up his bundle, then quietly stepped aside. He always acted in a very careful, prudent manner. Naturally, he wouldn't make any moves in front of so many people. Hu Kun suddenly said, Today, my humble shop will close early, aside from those who have business with me, everyone else, please leave. Thus, those who wanted to watch the fun had to leave, suddenly, only two people were left in the main hall, Tu King continued to sip his tea, head lowered, Fu Hongju's head was raised, and he was staring at Hu Kun, stationed at the upper flowered railing. Hu Kun said, you have business with me? Fu Hongju said, you are Hu Kun? Hu Kun nodded, he smirked. If Du Shiki told you to come here to kill me, you found the right person. Fu Hongju said, if you were looking for someone to kill Du Shiki, you found the right person as well. Hu Kun was obviously caught off guard, you? Fu Hongju said, I don't look like a killer. Hu Kun said, you two have a feud? Fu Hongju said, it isn't necessary to be feuding with someone to kill them. Hu Kun said, why do you usually kill people? Fu Hongju said, to make myself happy. Hu Kun said, what does it take to make you happy? Fu Hongju said, a few tens of thousands of tails of silver usually make me happy. Light shone in Hu Kun's eyes, I can make you happy, will you go kill Du Shiki for me today? Fu Hongju said, I've heard it said that you aren't a very stingy person. Hu Kun said, are you certain you can kill him? Fu Hongju said, I can guarantee that he won't live beyond the start of the next month. Hu Kun laughed. I am very happy to help my friends be happy as well, only, I'm afraid you came a bit too late. Fu Hongju said, you already found someone else? Hu Kun glanced at Tu King out of the corner of his eye, smiled, and nodded. Fu Hongju coldly said, if he's the man you found, then you found the wrong man. Hu Kun said, oh? Fu Hongju said, dead men can kill anybody. Hu Kun said, he's a dead man? Fu Hongju said, if he isn't a dead man, he should have killed me by now. Hu Kun said, why? Fu Hongju said, because if you can't make me happy, I'll definitely go seek out Du Shiki. Hu Kun said, if you seek out Du Shiki, you'll tell him to be on guard against him. Fu Hongju said, I will help Du Shiki kill him. Hu Kun said, first kill him, then kill me. Fu Hongju said, if Du Shiki is alive, then you must die. Hu Kun said, thus, he should kill you right now. Fu Hongju said, Unfortunately, a dead man can't kill anybody. Hu Kun let out a sigh, then turned towards Tu King. Did you hear what he just said? Tu King said, I'm not deaf. Hu Kun said, Then why don't you kill him? Tu King said, I'm not happy. Hu Kun said, What will it take to make you happy? Tu King said, 50,000 tails. Hu Kun appeared startled. Du Shiki only costs 30,000 tails. But he costs 50,000? Tu King said, Du Shiki doesn't know me, he knows me. Hu Kun said, Therefore, you can ambush Du Shiki, but you cannot ambush him. Tu King said, In addition, he's holding a saber, so my risk is greater. Hu Kun said, But you are still certain that you can kill him. Tu King coldly said, I've never missed the mark on my target. Hu Kun let out a sigh, Fine, kill him, I'll give you 50,000 tails. Two King said, pay first, then kill. Brand new thousand tail bank notes, a total of fifty of them. Two King counted them twice, as though he were a miser. He wet his fingers with his saliva as he counted, 
then wrapped them up in a square cloth and stored them in the money pouch hanging off his belt. Money which was earned through blood and sweat is always especially precious, although he rarely sweated while earning money, he often shed blood. Blood is naturally more valuable than sweat. Fu Hongju coldly watched him, no expression on his face at all, but Hu Kun smiled, and suddenly said, you must be a very rich man already. Tu King didn't deny it. Hu Kun said, you are married. Tu King shook his head. Hu Kun's smile became even more friendly. Why don't you store the money here with me? I'll give you interest, 3% interest. Tu King shook his head again. Hu Kun said, you are willing, can it be that you distrust me? Tu King coldly said, the only person I trust is myself. He patted his money pouch, all of my money is here, there's only one way it can be taken. Hu Kun naturally did not dare to ask, but the look in his eyes as good as asked, what way? Tu King said, by killing me. He stared at Hu Kun, this belongs to whoever kills me, would you like to give it a try? Hu Kun laughed, his laughter was very forced, you know I won't try, because... Tu King coldly said, because you don't have that much courage. He suddenly turned towards Fu Hongju, how about you, if I kill you, is there anything which you will leave behind for me? Fu Hongju said, only a lesson. Tu King said, what lesson? Fu Hongju said, don't keep the weapon with which you kill people wrapped inside a bundle, a person who intends to kill others, as well as a person who is about to be killed, is impatient, they won't wait for you to unwrap your bundle. Tu King said, that is a very good lesson, I will keep it in my mind at all times. He suddenly laughed, actually, I'm also an impatient sort of person, if I had to unwrap my bundle in order to kill people, I'd go crazy with impatience. He finally stretched out his hands and unwrapped his bundle, what sort of weapon was in that bundle? Hu Kun really wanted to see what weapon he used, his gaze unconsciously affixed itself upon it. Who would have thought that before the bundle was unwrapped, Tu King already made his move, his weapons for killing weren't hidden within the bundle, his entire body, from top to bottom, was covered with weapons, with a clinging sound, seven cold rays of light shot out from his waist and his clothes, from the back of his collar shot out three flowery crossbow bolts, two iron lotus flowers flew out from his hands, two sharp knives shot out from the tip of his boots as well. An iron lotus flower is an ancient Chinese weapon which looks like a flying claw a flexible metal chain attached to an iron claw. As soon as the hidden projectile weapons flew out, he jumped up into the air, both legs striking out in rapid succession, in the blink of an eye, he had used four different types of lethal weapons, that eye grabbing bundle of his was still placed on the table, this was truly outside of other people's expectations, even Hu Kun was greatly shocked, this technique alone was worth him spending 50,000 tails of silver for. He was certain that Tu King wouldn't miss his mark this time either, but he was wrong, because he did not know that this pallid-faced stranger was Fu Hongju. Fu Hongju had already pulled out his saber. A saber without equal in all the world, unimaginable, unthinkable saber techniques. No matter how vile the hidden projectile might be, or how devious the plot, once they met with this saber, it was as though ice and snow had met the sunlight. A flash of saber light. A series of light clinking sounds, like small golden bells being sounded, all the hidden projectiles in the air fell to the floor, every single one of them had been cut in half, right down the middle, even a master craftsman using a carving knife to slowly whittle away at them might not be able to make such neat, perfect cuts. Only after the saber light disappeared could the blood be seen, blood, flowing down from the face, to King's face. A saber cut had been left on his face carving down from the middle of his eyebrows, all the way down to his nose, if 30% more force had been used in that chop, without question his head would have been split in two as well. The saber was already sheathed again. Fresh blood flowed down from his nose, it entered his mouth, tasting hot, salty, and bitter. Every single muscle on Two King's face had become contorted with pain, but his body didn't move. He knew that his career as an assassin had just come to an end. This was a secretive line of work, one must silently, invisibly kill his target, then silently, invisibly disappear. Nobody who had such a saber wound on his face could be suited for this line of work. Fu Hongju stared at the saber wound, he suddenly waved his hand, you, go. Two king's lips were twitching as well, 
Where shall I go? Fu Hongju said, so long as you don't kill others, you can go anywhere you wish. Tu King said, Yu Hai aren't you killing me? Fu Hongju said, you insisted on 50,000 tails before you would kill me, for me to kill you, I would at least demand 50,000 tails as well. He coldly continued, I've never killed for free either. Tu King said, but have more than merely 50,000 tails on me, if you killed me, they would belong to you. Fu Hongju said, that's another matter entirely, I adhere to the same rule. First get paid, then kill. Rules are founded on principles. Regardless of the nature of one's profession, if one wishes to be successful, one must follow their principles. Tu King no longer opened his mouth, he silently removed two stacks of banknotes from his money pouch, a total of 15 notes. Once again, he carefully counted the notes twice, then placed them on the table. Lifting his head up, he glanced at Hukun, this is still yours. Hukun was coughing. Tu King said, you can give him 50,000 tails and tell him to kill me. Hukun suddenly stopped coughing, how much more do you have on you? Tu King closed his mouth. Hukun stared at him, light shone in his eyes. Tu King had already lifted up the bundle on the table, and was slowly heading out. Hukun suddenly said loudly, kill him, I'll pay 50,000 tails. Fu Hongju coldly said, if you want to kill this person, you have to make the move yourself. Hukun asked, why? Fu Hongju said, because he is already injured, he no longer has the capability to defend himself. Hukun's two hands tightened on the railing, with a thudding sound, three flying daggers slammed into the wooden railing. The flying daggers came from Tu King's bundle, the bundle was filled with weapons as well. Tu King coldly said, I never kill people for free. But for you, I am willing to break this rule and make an exception, do you want to try me? Hukun's face had changed long ago. He really could not guess how many more weapons remained in the bundle, and how many more remained on Tu King's person. But he could already tell that regardless of what type of hidden projectiles Tu King might use, all that Tu King needed was a single one in order to kill him. Tu King finally left, as he reached the doorway, he suddenly turned around and stared at Fu Hongju then stared at Fu Hongju's saber, it was as though he had never seen a person like this, never seen a saber like this. He suddenly asked, your honorable surname? Fu Hongju said, my surname is Fu. Tu King said, Fu Hongju. Fu Hongju said, correct. Tu King lightly sighed, actually, I should have thought of the possibility that it was you long ago. Fu Hongju said, but you didn't think? Tu King said, I didn't dare to think. Fu Hongju said, didn't dare? Tu King said, if a person thinks too much, he won't kill people anymore. It was dark outside already, there were no stars, no moon. As soon as Tu King left, he disappeared into the darkness. Hukun let out a long sigh, then mumbled to himself, why didn't you kill him? Aren't you afraid that he will reveal your secret? Fu Hongju said, I have no secret. Hukun said, are you no longer interested in killing Du Shiki? Fu Hongju said, killing people isn't a secret. Hukun let out a sigh, there are 80,000 tails worth of banknotes on the table, kill Du Shiki, and they will be yours. Fu Hongju said, first pay, then kill. Hukun forced out a laugh, you can take them away now. Fu Hongju took the banknotes, also counting them twice, before slowly asking, do you know where Du Shiki is right now? Hukun naturally knew. In order to discover his whereabouts, I've spent 15,000 tails. Fu Hongju lightly said, killing someone was always a very wasteful thing. Hukun let out a sigh, he watched as he put the banknotes into his clothes, then suddenly asked, killing people isn't a secret? Fu Hongju said, no. Hukun said, you aren't afraid of killing in front of a multitude of people? Fu Hongju said, killing can be done at any place. Hukun laughed, he really laughed. Then you can go find him right now. Fu Hongju said, where is he? Hukun narrowed his eyes, going all out. Fu Hongju said, going all out? Hukun said, going all out, gambling wise, alcohol wise. I can only hope that he hasn't yet lost everything, and that he hasn't yet drunk himself to death. Not only was Du Shiki winning, he was very sober as well. Whenever a person is winning, he is always very sober. Only losers will be muddle-headed. He was in the middle of shuffling the cards. 32 wooden domino cards, each and every one, 
he seemed to control, even the dice seemed to be obeying his commands. He wasn't playing any tricks or using any sleight of hand. When a person's gambling luck came upon him, there is no need at all to cheat. Earlier, he had used a long 13 card and taken money from everyone at the table. By now, it seemed as though he had won 20,000 tails. Originally, he definitely could have won some more. Unfortunately, the people playing with him had gradually diminished, because everyone's money pouch was now empty. He hoped that one or two fresh faces would enter. Just at this moment, he saw a stranger with an ashen face walk in. Fu Hongju was watching him shuffle the cards. His hands were enormous and very strong. Du Shiki took the part of the bank again. Out of four hands, he won everybody's money on two of them, but only made a total of 200 or so tails. Everybody else at his table seemed to be without vitality already. In a casino, money is blood. How could people without blood have vitality? Did this stranger with such a pale face have a flourishing flow of blood in his veins? Dushiki suddenly raised up his head and smiled at him. Friend, would you like to play a few rounds as well? Fu Hongju coldly stared at him. Just one hand. Dushiki said, only one hand, victory or defeat, to be determined in one hand, then? Fu Hongju said, right. Dushiki laughed, great, only this sort of gambling is really fun. He straightened his waist, all of the joints in his body immediately cracked, and all of the muscles underneath his robe moved hither and to without stopping. This was the result of 18 years of bitter training. He was 8 feet, 2 inches tall, he had large shoulders, but a slender waist, supposedly, he could snap a cow's head with one head. Everyone who saw him couldn't help but gaze upon him with awe and veneration, as though they were officials gazing upon the emperor. The 80 banknotes had already been taken out, brand new banknotes, in a pale white hand. Dushiki said, how much do you have? Fu Hongju said, 80,000. Dushiki let out a light breath, his eyes were so bright, it was as though two torches had been lit in them. 80,000 tails on one hand? Fu Hongju said, regardless of who wins, only one hand. Dushiki said, unfortunately, I don't have that much. Fu Hongju said, no harm. Dushiki said, by no harm, do you mean that isn't a problem? Fu Hongju nodded. Dushiki laughed, did you steal this money, is that why you don't care? Fu Hongju said, they weren't stolen, they were used to purchase a life. Dushiki said, whose life? Fu Hongju said, yours. The smile on Dushiki's face froze, everybody nearby had clenched their fists, some had clenched their sabers. But Fu Hongju didn't even glance at him. If I lose, these 80,000 tails are yours. If you lose, you must leave with me. Dushiki said, why must I leave with you? Fu Hongju said, because I don't want to kill you here. Dushiki laughed again, but his laughter was very forced. If you lose, are you still going to kill me? Fu Hongju said, no matter what, I must kill you. Dushiki said, what you seem to be saying is that regardless of who wins, we'll still stake our lives and fight each other. Only, there are too many people here, all of whom are my people, and so you want to fight elsewhere. Fu Hongju coldly said, I don't want to kill too many people. Dushiki laughed, you seem to be certain that you can kill me. Fu Hongju said, if I wasn't certain, why would I come? Dushiki laughed loudly. Fu Hongju said, 80,000 tails of silver can be used for many things. After you die, your friends and brothers can use them. Suddenly, a knife chopped out from behind them, aimed at the back of his head. Fu Hongju didn't leave, but Du Shiki had already seized the hand wielding that knife. With a clanging sound, the knife dropped to the floor. With a cracking sound, the blade of the knife split. Du Shiki's face sunk. In a fierce voice, he said, This affair has nothing to do with any of you. You are only allowed to watch, not to interfere. No one dared to move. Du Shiki laughed again. You are all my good brothers. First watch me win these 80,000 tails of silver. With one pull, he tugged open his jacket, revealing his copper-like chest. How shall we gamble? Fu Hongju said, you choose. Dushiki said, we'll play Pai Gao. One flip of the cards, two eyes staring at it. This way is the best. Fu Hongju said, fine. Dushiki said, shall we still use this set of cards? Fu Hongju nodded. Dushiki blinked his eyes. Do you know how many matches I've won with this set of domino cards? 
Fu Hongju shook his head. Du Shiki said, I won over 60 hands, my luck is extremely good with this set of domino cards. Fu Hongju said, even the best of luck will have to turn at some point. Du Shiki stared at him, you are self-assured when it comes to killing, you are certain of winning in gambling as well? Fu Hongju lightly said, if I wasn't certain, why would I gamble? Du Shiki laughed loudly, this time, you're wrong, when it comes to gambling, not even divinities can be certain, in the past, I've also seen many people like you who were certain of winning, by now, they've also lost so much that they've hung themselves. The 32 domino cards were divided into 4 rows, with 8 cards in each row. Du Shiki pushed out one row, there's only the two of us gambling, and both of us are starting with a blank slate. Fu Hongju said, I understand. Du Shiki said, so we should gamble with 4 cards. Fu Hongju said, fine. Du Shiki pushed forwards 4 cards with 2 fingers, if the dice roll is odd, the first set of cards is yours. Fu Hongju said, you shuffled the cards, I'll roll the dice. Du Shiki said, fine. Fu Hongju picked up the dice, casually, he tossed them out. 7, odd. Du Shiki said, I'll take the second set. Two sets of wooden domino cards, with a cracking sound, they came together, then separated. Light shone in Du Shiki's eyes, a smile appeared on his lips, his friends all let out a breath as well. Everyone could tell that he had a very good set of cards. Fu Hongju only coldly said, you lose. Du Shiki said, how do you know that I've lost, do you know what cards I am holding? Fu Hongju said, you have a heaven card, and a human card, forming a heavens bar. Astonished, Du Shiki stared at him, did you look at your own cards? Fu Hongju shook his head, I don't need to look, my cards form a mixed five. Du Shiki couldn't help but reveal his cards, he really did have a mixed five. Mixed five just so happened to defeat Heaven's Bar. Du Shiki was stunned, everyone was stunned. And then, there was a commotion, this brat must have cheated, he marked the cards. Fu Hongju smirked, who do these cards belong to? Du Shiki said, mine. Fu Hongju said, have I touched the cards at all? Du Shiki said, no. Fu Hongju said, then how could I have cheated? Du Shiki let out a sigh, he smiled bitterly, you didn't cheat, I'll go with you. Another commotion. Those who gripped their daggers earlier wanted to use their sabers again, those clenching their fists once more wanted to punch out. Du Shiki said in a fearsome voice, although I've lost at gambling money, I haven't lost yet in gambling lives. What are you guys kicking up a racket about? The disturbance immediately calmed, no one dared to open their mouths. Du Shiki laughed again, and his laughter was still very cheerful. Actually, you should all know that I definitely won't lose when it comes to gambling lives. Fu Hongju said, you are certain of yourself? Du Shiki smiled, even if I'm not certain, I have nine lives. At most, you can only take one away. No stars, no moon, no lanterns. Du Shiki suddenly let out a sigh, actually, I don't have nine lives, I don't have a single life at all. Fu Hongju said, oh? Du Shiki said, my life is already Yan Nanfi's. Fu Hongju said, you know who I am? Du Shiki nodded, I owe him a life, and he owes you a life, I'm willing to pay you back for him. He stopped for a moment, his face was still carrying a smile, I only hope you'll let me know one thing. Fu Hongju said, what is it? Du Shiki said, how did you recognize the cards? Fu Hongju didn't directly respond, instead, he asked, do you know that every person has a fingerprint on their fingers? Du Shiki said, yes, I do, some have circle fingerprints, other have oral fingerprints. Fu Hongju said, do you know that no two fingerprints are alike in all the world? Du Shiki did not know that. At that time, nobody knew things like that. He bitterly laughed. I rarely look at people's hands, especially men's hands. Fu Hongju said, even if you often look at others' hands, you wouldn't be able to tell, the differences are very minute. Du Shiki said, but you can tell? Fu Hongju said, even if two biscuits were made using the very exact same mold, I would be able to tell them apart. Du Shiki sighed, that must be a natural talent. Fu Hongju Dili said, right, it is a natural talent, only... This is a natural talent that was practiced in a secret room without the slightest hint of light. Du Shiki said, 
How long did you train for? Fu Hongju said, I only practiced for 17 years, for only 6 to 10 hours a day. Du Shiki said, Did you train your saber skills in the same way? Fu Hongju said, When you are training your eyesight, you must always grip your saber, otherwise, you will fall asleep. Du Shiki forced out a laugh, Only now do I realize the true meaning of the words natural talent. The real meaning of natural talent is bitter training, bitter training without pause. Fu Hongju said, its set of dominoes was made using wood, and the wood had its own grainy patterns. Every single pattern was different. I watched you shuffle the cards twice. There isn't a single one of those 32 cards which I don't recognize. Dushiki said, but if that set of dice came out odd, wouldn't you have lost? Fu Hongju said, that set of dice definitely wouldn't have come out odd. Dushiki said, why? Fu Hongju Dili said, because I am a natural talent at casting dice as well. They had already arrived at the end of the long alleyway, the streets outside were even darker. The night was now very deep. Fu Hongju suddenly jumped onto a roof, the highest roof, every dark nook and cranny was within his eyesight. He didn't kill people for others to watch, this couldn't be seen by others either. Dushiki finally caught up with him, what, exactly, do you want me to do? Fu Hongju said, I want you to die. Du Shiki said, you really want me to die? Fu Hongju said, you are already a dead man. Du Shiki didn't understand. Fu Hongju said, starting now, you need to be dead for at least a year. Du Shiki thought for a while, it seemed as though he somewhat understood, but still didn't fully understand. Fu Hongju said, I've even prepared the coffin for you, it's at the graveyard just outside of the city. Du Shiki blinked. Are there some other things in the coffin? Fu Hongju said, there's three other people. Du Shiki said, three people? Fu Hongju said, but many people don't want for them to continue on living. Du Shiki said, are you going to make sure that they continue to live? Fu Hongju nodded, so I must help them find a safe, secret place. I cannot let anyone find them. Du Shiki's gaze slowly brightened. And so I'll take the coffin back and arrange a glorious funeral for myself. Fu Hongju said, you must die, because no one will think to ask a dead man about their whereabouts. Du Shiki said, in addition, you're the one who killed me. Everyone will believe that you made an arrangement with Hukun, that you will kill me in exchange for him protecting them. By now, he finally understood, this was actually a simple matter, only, Fu Hongju was executing it in a very complicated way. Fu Hongju said, I must be extremely cautious, they are simply too sinister and evil. Du Shiki said, who, exactly, are they? Fu Hongju said, Yang Wuji, Zhao Saiwu, Guang Sun Tu, and a demon decapitating saber of heaven's monarch. He didn't say Guang Ziyu's name, he didn't want to shock Du Shiki too much. But the names of these four men was already more than enough to shock even someone with eight times as much courage as an ordinary ma. Dushiki gazed fixedly at him, they want to deal with you, naturally, you won't let them off easy either. Fu Hongju didn't deny that either. Dushiki suddenly let out a sigh, I'm not afraid of them, because I'm already a dead man, a dead man need fear no one, but you. Fu Hongju didn't deny it. Dushiki said, after you handle the affairs here, are you going to go find them? He looked at Fu Hongju, then looked at that black saber, he suddenly chuckled. Perhaps the one who should be afraid isn't you, but them. One year from today, perhaps they will all be dead men as well. Fu Hongju's gaze was distant, his person seemed to be distant as well. All around them was darkness, far off into the distance. After a long time, he slowly said, Sometimes, I wish I had nine lives as well. To deal with people like them, one life really is too few. A bleak and desolate mountain valley, barren and infertile soil. There were only ten or so households in the mountain village, at the base of the mountain there was a small house, with a bamboo and chrysanthemum garden. From far away, Dushiki looked at the chrysanthemums beneath the bamboo stand, his eyes seemed to be filled with tenderness. Once he arrived here, it seemed as though he had turned into one of the honest, unsophisticated farmers. It seemed as though Fu Hongju's heart was sighing with emotion as well. He just left the small house. Zuo Yutsun and the children were sleeping. Sleep peacefully, there's definitely no one who will find you here. What about you, are you leaving? I'm not leaving, 
I'll be staying here a few days as well. He very rarely lied, but this time he really did lie. He couldn't not lie, because he couldn't not leave, since he must leave, why cause unnecessary pain? Fu Hongju lightly sighed, this is a good place, a person who is able to peacefully live out his life here must be a person of great bliss indeed. Du Shiki squeezed out a smile, I grew up here, originally, I could have been a very blissful person as well. Fu Hongju said, then, why did you leave? Du Shiki was silent, after a long time, he suddenly asked, did you see those chrysanthemums beneath that patch of bamboo? Fu Hongju nodded. Du Shiki said, a little girl planted it, a little girl with big eyes and long hair. Fu Hongju said, where is she now? Du Shiki did not reply, he did not need to reply, the tears in his eyes spoke everything on his behalf. The chrysanthemums were still there, but the one who had planted them was gone. After another long period of time, he slowly said, actually, I should have come here to keep her company long ago, she must have been very lonely these past few years. When people died, would they still be as lonely as before? Fu Hongju took out that stack of banknotes, he gave them to Dushiki, who Kun wanted to use these to purchase your life, no matter how you all use it, you need have no regrets. Dushiki said, why don't you give them to her personally, are you leaving now? Fu Hongju nodded. Dushiki said, aren't you going to bid her farewell? Fu Hongju Dali said, since I am going to leave, why say farewell? Dushiki said, for you to have done so much for her, she must be very dear to you, at least, you should. Fu Hongju interrupted him, you've done many things for me, but you aren't a dear one to me. Dushiki said, but I am a friend. Fu Hongju coldly said, I have no dear ones, and I have no friends. The sun was setting in the west, it was sunset again. Fu Hongju strode beneath the setting sun, his footsteps did not stop, but grew slower, as though he had suddenly begun carrying a heavy burden on his shoulder. Did he really have no dear ones, no friends? Dushiki saw his solitary back disappear into the distance, he suddenly loudly said, I forgot to tell you something, Ukun is dead already. He was hung to death by someone with a rope at the top banister of the Ascendant Immortal Tea House. Fu Hongju didn't turn his head, who killed him? Du Shiki said, don't know, nobody knows, I only know that the person who killed him left behind two sentences. Those two sentences were left behind using fresh blood, this is my first time killing someone for free, it is also the last time I kill someone. The setting sun became even dimmer, but Fu Hongju's eyes suddenly shone with light. Tu King finally put down his knife, his butcher's knife. If this sort of person made up his mind about something, he definitely would not change. But I own I, too, hold the butcher's knife in my hand, when can I put it down? Fu Hongju tightly gripped his saber, the light in his eyes dimmed. He couldn't put down this saber yet, if people such as Gongsun Tu were still alive in the world, he couldn't put down this saber. He definitely could not, 